Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we're going to be doing another fun technique using alcohol ink. And this technique involves stamping with it. It's a great way to use the inks you already have in your collection. And it can be used with any alcohol ink. So today I'm going to be using stamps from Hero Arts, Friskers, and Deep Red. And you see I have the layering seahorse from Hero Arts, the deep red water drop background, the layering peacock, as well as the layering octopus and the layering goldfish. I'm also going to be making use of the peacock elegance by Friskers, and that will be mostly this feather right here. Now I am using semi-gloss photo paper from Epson. I love this paper. It is so close to what you would get for alcohol ink, Yupo paper, or even the alcohol ink cardstock. That, but it's such a lower price point that it makes it so much more economical. So I am taking out the alcohol inks we carry in our store. And sorry for the mess, but it's been very messy ink. And mine tended to leak a little bit. All right, so I'm starting with Sensational Sea Foam and Open Ocean for this panel. And I'm going to put both inks onto my felt pad, which you will see I'm using my Ranger Mini Ink Blending Tool. And I am going to be laying those down in stripes on my paper. Sorry for the, if you hear any noise about there we have some people doing some cutting out in our yard next door and they are actually being really loud right now so now I'm going to come in to top it off with a little bit of the captivating cobalt this is currently sold out in our store um, but hopefully we'll get some more made up for you pretty soon so I'm just going to go with that and I did actually drop a couple drops on there by accident, and, but that will not matter once I get these water droplets on. And this is the stamping technique. We are going to be laying this rubber stamp with the ink on top and laying it down. It does stay wet for a pretty good amount of time, though I wouldn't wait too long to stamp it, only because, of course, that would involve it drying before you stamp it. So. Don't let it dry too fast. Um, I'm finding that this technique does work better with the rubber stamp than it does with the polymer, um, only because the polymer tends to stick more. Now for my second panel, I'm taking the open ocean and I'm adding the, sen well, actually I started with the sensational sea foam and now I'm putting the open ocean and I'm also adding my alcohol blending solution and I'm gonna let it bloom and move around. That way I cover this whole panel in those beautiful droplets. And I'm just going to make sure I cover as much of the paper as possible. I'm going to add some more, that way it moves around a lot easier. The wonderful thing about blending solution is it makes your ink move. All right, so for this third panel, we are going to be doing the stamping first and then adding the background layer last. Because I didn't want the water droplets to be the focal point. In this card, I want the color to be the focal point and the background to be the droplets. So this is a great way to make use of your stamp in different ways. So depending on what you want to be the focal point, be depending on what layer you put it in as. So I'm using the Captivating Cobalt to touch down those little water droplets. And I'm not concerning if they overlap because you know what? No one's gonna see it. It's gonna be under so much other beautiful colors that no one's gonna see that they overlap and they are a little thicker in areas, but it gives a nice base coat of the bubbles. I'm just making sure I don't have any bald spots, just in case they show through. So now I'm going to do the same dropping technique and I'm starting with the open ocean and I'm just going to lay that down and I'm going to hit it now with the sensational sea foam. 
I feel like these colors are perfect for water scenes because they're water based. They look, they're watercolors. They're beautiful. You know, you see blues and turquoises and sea foams in your water all the time. So I'm adding some captivating cobalt and then I'm topping it off with some of my blending solution. That way I get a nice, even coat throughout this whole thing. I'm just going to touch some more down. And you can sort of see, still see the bubbles underneath. They haven't bled down. And I felt that I wasn't getting the spots covered, so I'm just going to dab this with it. That way I get a nice layer. Oops, don't mind the hair. Apparently I was shedding. All right. So while that one dries, we're going to start our next one. So for this one, I'm taking the Sensational Sea Foam and the Open Ocean one more time, as well as a very messy electric eggplant. As you can see, my hands took the brunt of it, but still, it's all right. And I'm going to go willy-nilly. I'm not going to make stripes with this. I'm just going to make circular, stripe, every which way, zigzag, patterns. And I'm just going to cover this paper. No one says your patterns have to be straight, uniform lines. Have fun with it. Let it spread. Let it do its work. That's the joys of alcohol ink. It spreads and does a beautiful job no matter what. Now, I had started putting this in my Stamp Perfect, and I realized this, this photopolymer stamp was just sticking to my paper. And I kept on losing it, so, like, I just there. So I figured doing it on an acrylic block would be a lot easier. So I am putting some of the, I believe it was the Sensational Seafoam mixture that I kind of had on that sponge. And I'm putting on that stamp and then just placing the stamp randomly throughout the picture. Like I said, polymer stamps seem to stick to the photo paper like magic. Um, the rubber, not as much. So if you are concerned about it sticking and you rather use rubber, it does work better with this technique. Though you can use a photopolymer, but be prepared that some of them may stick to your paper. So I'm making sure I have a nice layer of it. I've also tried to do some with the blending solution just to give it a little bit more texture to it and actually lift off some of the, the image. I was going to do it with the new lift off from Tim Holtz, but I apparently missed the deadline before I already ordered it out. So it was sold out by the time I got to it, so I'm going to have to wait till it comes back and stop. So look forward. Hopefully I can get some and we can do another video with alcohol lifting. All right, so now I'm going to stamp images for my cards. Now I am going to be using the Tasty Tangerine. And this has a really corally pink undertone. So because this ink is so unsaturated, it's going to come out almost electric pink. But it's really cool either way. And I'm going to stamp the bottom layer of this octopus. The top layer is going to be my archival ink from Ranger. Sadly, I only have it in black right now. I'm about to order some more because I am in love with this ink. It works fantastic for coloring and stuff. And I might end up buying it in the minis just to have a nice selection. So I'm going to dab that on there. And you're going to see when I lift it, you get this kind of cool print look. It reminds me of the art we used to have in the 90s, you had that really fluorescent color with the black top or layer. I don't know. Reminds me of the 90s art. I don't know why, but it, it kind of has that kind of feel to it. Now, I'm not one to waste, so I'm going to actually put my goldfish on top of this part of the octopus because I'm going to cut them out anyway. And instead of using a sheet for each of them, why not use the space? So I'm going to do this with the Tasty Tangerine and the Buzzing Bumblebee. And I'm going to mix it together and then add my blending solution. And I'm going to do, add it to these beautiful goldfish. And I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the octopus. I'm going to put the black layer on top. So I'm going to wipe this down. Trick is to use your alcohol on a rag and just wipe it down. And that takes care of all alcohol ink on your acrylic, block, whatever. 
and also takes it off your stamp. Though I would be careful with certain stamps, make sure it's going to be okay with the alcohol. I'm pretty confident with uh, Hero Arts quality of their stamps that it wouldn't damage it. I often use alcohol to also clean my surface on my glass mat because it really takes off the adhesive really well. So I'm going to lay out this top layer of these goldfish and I'm going to get my ink ready and I'm going to ink these up. Now the top layer did not include the eyeball that is in a separate part of the kit. So those I'm going to end up adding with an acrylic block. I just feel with these little eyeballs that they lay out a lot better with the acrylic block. I tried doing them in my stamping the stamp positioning tool, I just feel like it moves around too much and it was hard to get it to stick right. So I'm just going to do it freehand. And it does work out a lot better. Of course, it's such a small area, you don't really need to worry about the detail. All right, so for these next images, I'm going to do a seahorse to start with. And I'm going to end up sharing the paper with the peacock. Now, to avoid the sticking, I did try to do it without putting the paper in first, and it did work fine. So this one I'm using the Bodacious Boysenberry, as well as that Tasty Tangerine. And I'm going to add my blending solution, just to give it some pink and orange undertones. Though I feel more the Boysenberry showed than the orange, but still. It gave it a little bit of a light, almost a lighter pink undertone. So for my second layer, since this was a three layer stamp, some of here are stampings come in two layers and others come in multiple layers. And this is one that actually came in multiple layers. So to make this other layer pop, because I'm not going to do all of it black, I am going to do this in the electric eggplant. And I'm going to dab that on there. I didn't get enough purple on there. And you're going to see when I lift it, it gives it some more dimension. So for our last layer, it's, we're going to use our black. And this is a moment where I almost like, I wish I had more colors in that archival, because I probably would have done it in a pink, just keeping the pink tones. Maybe in the future when I have more of them, I'll be able to do this again. And, but still, even with the black, it came out really interesting. It was really, it's got a pretty design to it. Now I'm going to flip my paper over, and I'm going to now do my peacock. So, I'm going to start with the top part of the peacock, and then move to the tail, and lastly the leg. Now, I realized when I was putting it on the paper that this is one I probably am going to have to do diagonally because it is so long, because of the peacock tail. And that one actually didn't stick as well, which is nice, because the other one stuck like crazy. So, I'm going to be doing this in that's, it's going to actually be the Emerging Emerald, because I wanted it to be a more vibrant green. Though it actually almost had the colors of the sea foam in it too, because I think I used the same, same uh, felt piece. But it doesn't matter, because about how neat and clean and organize that stamping image is because I'm going over with the black and that's the outline. And don't worry about positioning your stamp perfect with these type of images. This type of image you can be off a little bit. It's you know it's kind of like that block printing look. So I'm going to lay out the first layer of my tail. Now the tail did end up having three layers. The top of the bird only had one. I mean two. What am I saying? One. Two layers. It had the bottom layer and the top layer. This one has three. So the first layer I did in the sensational sea foam. Now I'm going to come do the second layer in the emerald green, the emerging emerald. But I felt that I pulled a little too much, so I'm just going to sop some of it up. That's a trick. Take a dry rag, sop up some of that ink if you need to. 
just like you do with watercolor. And now I'm going to come in with a captivating cobalt just to give it some dimension. And you can see a little bit of dimension showing, though it is very faint. So my last layer, of course, is the little peacock part. So we're going to make sure we get those all lined up. Um, I did also add some electric eggplant to try to get some more color dimension also in that second layer. Though I don't think it also made much of a difference. So I see that the dots leave a lot to be open. So I decided to go bring the second layer back into this. And I am going to do that also in the archival just to give it some more dimension. But I am going to do it very faintly and lightly. That way it's not too intense, but intense enough that you see the textures. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, of course, this little peacock needs some legs to stand on. So I'm going to add some legs in the black. Ugh, now it's sticking to my paper, but not sticking to the acrylic block. Let's try that again. There we go. So I'm going to add those also in the black archival ink. Like I said, I really wish I had more colors, but that's what I got. So there are our images, and we're going to fussy cut those out. Now for our first card that we're going to assemble, and you see my inky hands, sometimes alcohol inks can be very messy. If you fear the mess, you can always wear gloves, um, either latex or uh, vinyl gloves, depending if you have any allergies. Now I'm going to flip my mat over since I did a lot of stamping and alcohol. I don't want to contaminate my paper. So I'm going to add my card form, which is a, tech, a pattern card form with white inside. And I'm going to add in the sweet plum. Wishing you a lovely day. I love the pattern of this lattice design. It was really vibrant and it actually did very well with this panel. So I already put my foam on there as you saw earlier. So I'm going to adhere it right to the card and I'm not concerned about putting too much adhesive down because the nice thing about alcohol ink is your paper doesn't have time to warp because your alcohol inks dry really, really fast. I'm just adhering his little feet down. But because they dry fast, it doesn't warp your paper. Now, I realized after the fact that I really wanted to put the sentiment on the front of the card on the card, not on a panel or anything that's raised. So I'm laying out my stamps all over my card. And you can do this in the stamp positioner. And if your card feels too thick, you just take out your, your extra layer and just do it on the base layer like you do for rubber stamps. So there is ways to fix it should you make it. Or you could freehand it with a rubber with an acrylic block. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I got them lined up and really thick. So I put the Hello, You're Truly Radiant in the Sweet Plum on the front. And now I'm taking some of my Aurora Borealis Pearls and my Zig 2A glue. And I'm adhering some of the kind of light lavender and blue and light turquoise colored pearls on this card. Just to give it that little extra pizzazz. I love the colors in this card. It's very soft but muted. Very abstract. I, I just... Uh, the four I made, this is actually one of my favorites. Now after I did that, I decided I feel like I need some more. So I'm going to add some more quickly. Sometimes when you look at a card, you think you put enough on there and then you go, oh, what was I thinking? I need more. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the pearls in there just to make sure it's balanced. I'm trying to keep the colors, of course, as muted as possible because we don't want it to be overly bright like the yellow or the green. And there we go. Now, I feel that was a lot better. Now, for this panel, I am going to be using my seahorse. So I took the bubbles that came in the kit and I positioned my seahorse just to make sure I had them in the right place. 
them in Bahama blue on top of that panel. And I'm also going to add the little seahorses that came in the kit just to give some added background and dimension to th this card. So I'm going to pick out some colors. I believe the first one is the rosebud. And then I'm doing lilac posies. And the last one I was going to do in orange, and I believe that was going to be tangelo. But I think I ended up changing my mind, and I did it instead in the grape jelly. Because I was, was not sure how the orange would do on the panel if it would be muted. And it, it would kind of muddy it up. So I say, let's go with the darker purple. That way, it kind of stays in the same color family too. So now I'm going to hear my, I put some adhesive on my back of my card. And I'm also going to put adhesive on my, my seahorse also. And I also noticed that I didn't trim my card short enough. So I did a quick trim because I had the panel a little too long. Now the seahorse I'm adhering with a different foam adhesive mounting tape is called Twin, Twin Tack. It's a little thinner than the scotch that I usually use. And honestly, I was out of scotch because usually that's my go-to. Now I put Wishing You Oceans of Joy inside in the Bahama Blue. And for the front, I am going to be putting in embossing you, me, and the sea. And I'm going to be using my vintage blue from Recollections. It has beautiful blue glitter embossing powder as well as chunks of holographic glitter in it. Um, for words, I find the holographic glitter doesn't work well. If you have a bigger image, it's gorgeous. So tip, if, if you get this one and you're doing words with it, just shake off that big glitter and put just keep the light glitter. And it actually is really pretty. Um, but if you are doing a big item and you want that big glitter, go for it. Um, I just find with writing sometimes it just doesn't sit right. So I always shake off the big holographic. I did have to touch it up because I didn't miss part of the U. But after I did that, it worked out perfect. So I am now ready to adhere my panel to my card form, which is a beautiful black and blue zigzag pattern. These cards, I decided to use a pattern card stock just to bring some more fun to it. And I sashed in a slashed design the Umanacy little sentiment, and I'm just going to stick it on. And to add some more pizzazz, I'm going to add some clear dots with my lacquer pen from Hero Arts. Between glossy accents in this pen, I do this quite often. Though I did notice I had a little sled explosion when it came out the first bubble, but we'll fix that up quickly. And once I feel that looks good, I guess that looks good enough. I'm going to add some more bubbles to these smaller little seahorses. This actually gives your car some added dimension. Bubbles, of course, are clear. And now I'm also going to add some of those Aurora Borealis pearls. I have one left of the lavender from doing the peacock, so now I'm also going to add some of my a new color that we had added. It's a light blue color. I think I called them aqua. And I'm going to add those. And isn't that pretty? So for the third card, we're going to make use of our beautiful little octopus here. And I'm using a blue polka dot card form for this one. So I'm taking all the little added extras that came with this kit, which included fish and reeds and bubbles. And I'm going to add this to make a scene around this octopus. 
So I'm starting by laying out the reeds, and now I'm going to lay out the bubbles and then the fish. And I'm going to leave space for my sentiment, which I am indeed going to stamp on the front of this panel, just like I did with the first one. So now that we got it all positioned, I am going to, if I can get it off, stamp my colored pieces to my image. So I'm going to start with the bubbles. And I'm doing that in Bahama Blue. And then I'm going to do the reeds and the fish in multiple colors. So I'm taking out my Paris Dusk. I decided not on that color. Um, Cottage Ivy and then also the bamboo leaves. And I'm going to stamp these. So I'm going to start with a cottage ivy and get those reeds and that little tiny, I don't know if it's a sea urchin or another type of sea plant on the bottom. And then I'm going to color my fish. I'm going to start in that cottage ivy. Then I'm going to add Paris Dusk. Others. And then I'm going to finish off with the bamboo leaves. My last fish. That way he looks like he's a little further away, like he's a lighter green. So I cut my craft foam and got that ready. And then I'm going to put in my sentiment in the Bahama Blue. I'm a sucker for you. And on the panel, I'm going to say, do you need a hand? Or need a hand. And I'm also going to do that in the Paris Dusk. That way it shows there. I was going to do the Bahama Blue, but I was afraid it would blend into it too much. So now that I have all my pieces ready, I'm going to adhere the craft foam to the back of this panel. And after adjusting some cuts, it worked out perfect. I had to cut off some more on the top, just like another one. I forgot to do that. And, and I don't have a good layer of glue. Let me do it again. I'm going to lay that on top of that card form. And now I'm going to add my octopus with some more of that twin tack. I'm going to look it up and I'm going to find out where I found it. I had it in a kit and I don't remember where I got it from. So I'll have to research it and let you guys know. I like to use it because it is a foam tape but it's very thin. It's not as thick as the scotch. So it doesn't give super big a dimension but it gives a little. And I'm going to just adhere down some of the little tentacles that way they don't fly up. Now just like I did with the Seahorses, I'm going to add some bubbles and with my lacquer pen, and I'm going to add some on top of the fish. And lastly, I'm going to add some around the words on the front sentiment. These are really fun and simple cards that you can make. All right, so for our last card, we're going to use our goldfish. And I'm going to use that panel with the fun bubbles on it for them. Inside the kit, they came with some little rocks, and it looks like aquarium plants. So I'm going to put my rocks in the lilac posies, only because I want it to be bright and vibrant. I later thought about it, said I really should have done it in the ombre because that would have been really fun because, you know, rocks are colorful. And you go into any aquarium, you've got colorful rocks. They come in rainbows of colors, different combinations. So have fun with it. I chose to go simple on this card, and I left them one color. And you notice I'm not putting them straight. I'm staggering them up, down, all around because rocks fall down like that. They don't fall straight. So don't worry about it being perfectly straight. As long as it seems plausible, you can stamp it that way. So now that I got my rocks done, I'm going to add my aquarium plants. 
and I decided to do those in a ombre effect. So like I was going to shut it down with the rocks, I'm going to do it with the plants. And I'm doing first the cottage ivy and then I'm adding the bamboo leaves in the middle. It kind of gives it like it's waving in the water. So I, oop, I lost the fishy. There it is. I'm going to take my panel and I'm going to put in the sentiment, just keep swimming. And the one thing I liked about this card form is it almost looks like scales, which is perfect for this goldfish. There we go. I'll let that dry. And while we're letting that dry, we're going to get our craft foam ready on the back of our panel. And I'm going to make sure I cut it right. Before I start hearing this time. I have actually really fallen in love with this AdTech roller. It is super sticky, as you can see. Oh, actually, we ripped that foam. And I'm going to read here it. It's not going to be that big of a deal that tore the foam. It's not visible. So I'm just going to trim it down where I messed up. It is a really sticky adhesive, and I'm actually very happy with it. I think I like it actually better than my Elmer's. So now I really don't care if Elmer's ever comes back in stock. Um, maybe sometimes when you have something like that happen, it gets you out of your comfort zone. I find it's a little bit more sticky, and it actually adheres things a lot better. And it doesn't balk as much as the Elmer's. I always thought the Elmer's one balked a lot. So I'm really excited that this one doesn't. I find it balks right as you're running out. So it's a great way to know that you're running out because it balks in. So I'm definitely going to have to buy some refills for that. All right. So I'm putting some more of this twin tack on this large goldfish to start with and I'm going to peel off the stickers and stick it on and I'm going to do the same thing with its little companion here and to embellish them instead of doing the lacquer bubbles I'm going to do the bubbles with my little aqua colored dots Using that are their light pearl. I can't remember uh, light blue pearl. I I can't remember what I called them. I'm assuming they were the aqua blue. And there we go. I need a couple one more for this to be complete. And there we go. So look at that yet. Your pearls as your bubbles, your fish. Very simple but clean. Now, thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, please check out the last upload as well as a video specially curated just for you. And like always, we invite you to come click on this link, like our video, subscribe, and ring for notifications, as well as to visit and join our newsletter where you get crafty sales and our bi weekly newsletter.